Many times I've heard an interpretation of the thing's ending in which it's claimed that the character Childs can be proven to be an imitation because we can't see his breath. On superficial inspection, it's a nice little theory, and being that the interpretation has assimilated so many people on forums and offline, I figured it's time to put on my intellectual flamethrower, tie you folks to a couch for a few minutes, and put that theory through a little test. It's true that MacReady's breath is very visible and Childs's isn't, and since there was no CGI technology in filmmaking back in 1982, if the filmmakers had wanted to make one character have frosty breath and the other have none, then they'd have two basic filming options. They could arrange the lighting so that only MacReady's breath would be lit, or they could film the close-up shots in a studio environment where the room temperatures could be controlled so that in this shot it would be cold enough to cause breath condensation, and in this shot there would be none. I doubt that it's a studio location though, the lighting and colour temperatures between the wide and close shots are too similar and there's none of the usual evidence of rear screen projection fakery or anything like that. Now we can actually see both in this wide shot and the close up shots of Childs that his breath is actually visible in places, but you have to pay attention for it. So there's the studio set temperature change between shots theory out the window. We could, if we were really determined to push the no breath interpretation, say, well, you know, the filmmakers wanted to hide child's breath in the scene, and they did the best they could with the lighting to hide it. Sure, that's possible, but if it were the case, then we'd expect similar efforts to have been made elsewhere in the movie. For example, the giant thing that Mac blows up. It has no breath! But how many filmmakers in those days of practical effects would actually give a prosthetic creature frosty breath? I think they did it with the queen creature in Aliens, but it's rare. Also, MacReady doesn't have frosty breath in the scene either, and he's definitely human. So I think it's basically that this was an interior set that wasn't cold enough. So we need to find other instances of confirmed thing creatures or human imitations in locations cold enough to generate breath. There's the dog scene at the start, everyone's outside, but it's so bright with all the snow that breathing isn't so visible. So here we can see their breaths against their dark clothing, but here we can't see the dog's breath nor Clark's, yet Clark is definitely human. There is one close shot of the dog trying to lick Bennings and we can see its breath for a brief moment. Now for argument's sake we could say, well the filmmakers couldn't ask the dog not to breathe in the shot so this was unavoidable. Yeah, quite true. But there is one other example of a confirmed human imitation creature outside in the cold of the night where the actor could have been told specifically not to breathe as a way of making sure he didn't produce any breath condensation. It's this scene of the Bennings thing. He howls, and what do we see? Full on breath condensation with no attempt by the filmmakers to hide it. And for me that knocks the hell out of the theory that the thing doesn't breathe. Aside from that, there's also the basic biological factors. It's explained to us that the thing produces perfect imitations. You see, what we're talking about here is an organism that imitates other life forms, and it imitates them perfectly. So if it can reproduce cellular structures, memory patterns, haircuts, body temperatures, etc., then surely it can produce functioning imitation lungs. Well, what we got here is what appears to be, anyway, a normal set of internal organs. Heart, lungs, kidneys, liver, intestines. Seem to be normal. Plus the utterance of vocal noises and dialogue by humans and other animals involves exhalation. We can sort of speak while inhaling, but it sounds... Really weird. I've never tried that before, it's quite odd. We can't speak at all if there's no breathing involved, so how the hell could a thing imitation produce a perfectly matching voice for the person it's imitating if it didn't have functioning lungs? So it's a nice little theory about the no breath thing interpretation of the movie and the ending, but the evidence doesn't fit at the literal plot level. At the very most we could say that child's breath may have been hidden by deliberate lighting arrangements as a metaphor that he's not human. But then we could say that about the silhouetted appearance of Mac's face in the closing shot of the conversation as well. Viewers are right to play detective with the movie, as it is a complex affair with lots of hidden events and implied occurrences, but as with any complex investigation, don't base your conclusions on a single piece of evidence. 
If you come across people in the forums or elsewhere bringing up this no breath theory about the ending, then remember to mention this video and provide them with a link. Thanks for watching. You've been listening to Rob Eger. Subscribe and follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I've got more videos on The Thing and other classic movies on my two film analysis channels and a ton of downloadable videos and articles at my site, creativelearning.com. All those links are in the video description below.